Some have suggested that the losing team captain's headless body was laid to rest in one of these sacred cenotes, pools of water where gods were thought to dwell. In the 1920s, archaeologist Edward Thompson dredged out this cenote in Chichen Itza. And sure enough, he found human bones. He also found other things, including this surprise, rubber balls. They were over a thousand years old and incredibly well preserved. Check this out. This is a full scale replica of a poke to poke ball. Now, my first impression is that this is heavy. I would say eight to 10 pounds, which means that if this hit you during play, you'd feel it. It might even kill you if it hit you in the right place. But the most amazing thing about the poke to poke ball is this. It bounces. So what? Natural rubber isn't bouncy. It's made that way through a process called vulcanization, discovered in the 19th century. And yet, the Maya were playing poke to poke 3,000 years ago. So far as we know, the Maya were the very first people in history to discover and to use rubber in its raw form. And here it is. It's the sap of the Castillo Elastica tree, which has the consistency and the appearance, as you can see, of a mochaccino. What's fascinating is that the Maya found a million and one uses for this rubber, what we would call latex today. For example, they used it to make glue. And as you can see, I glued this cup to this lid, and it's a strong bond. There's a little gift to it, but it's strong. Now, another application is very clever. They took rubber, and they spread it on a piece of cloth, like this. And then what they did, I imagine, is to spread it out with a brush of some kind so that you get some uniform coverage of the cloth. And then what they did was to allow it to set out in a hot sun until it kind of firmed up. And the result, look over here. It's weatherproof cloth that you can make like raincoats and weatherproof clothes from. Now I have a cup of water here to show you what I mean. See how it beads up? Now, another application, one of my favorites, involved taking the rubbery sap and putting it into a container, like so. All right, that should be enough. And then what the Maya would do is they would literally dip their feet in this stuff. That's right. They would put their feet in this rubber and they would, so far as we know, cover the soles of their feet to create a kind of waterproofing or protection for the soles of their feet. This is kind of the ancient forerunner of today's galoshes or rubber boots. And the most impressive application of rubber is what they did to it to make the polka poke balls. After extracting the sap or latex from the Castillo Elastica tree, the Maya added a secret ingredient that really made all the difference in the world. The latex by itself was sticky and became brittle and dry. What the Maya discovered was that by adding the juice or sap from the morning glory vine, the rubber became bouncy and elastic. Intrigued by this ancient phenomenon, filmmaker Roberto Rochin had Maya rubber balls chemically analyzed and discovered that the addition of morning glory juice actually mimicked the modern process of vulcanization, a procedure that involves adding sulfur and heat to latex to greatly increase its elasticity. Vulcanization was invented by Charles Goodyear in 1839 nearly 3,500 years after the Maya had accomplished the very same results. We often speak carelessly of ancient cultures as if they were primitive. Yet the Maya were anything but that. Think about it. Even when they were playing games, they managed to mimic vulcanized rubber 3,000 years before the industrialized West did.